Welcome back everyone to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and this is the uh, video installment where I will be putting the um, the Singer Slantomatic Direct Drive Motor the one I call the ice cream cone, you may have a different name for it um, and uh, we will be installing it back into the machine and just like taking it out it's a relatively simple uh, procedure and uh, just thought I would go over again with all of you uh, some of the things you've been seeing in this motor little motor series of videos uh, on this particular motor and machine and I wanted to re-emphasize to you all that uh, you want to be very specific about how you use oils and lubricants okay so here in my right hand is sewing machine oil this is the only product to ever use in normal lubrication of the sewing machine itself. So those of you who, who sew on these machines and have them, you take care of them, uh, other than cleaning your feed dogs, you will follow the manual and put one drop of sewing machine oil before each project, like you normally do. Uh, you would never, ever use sewing machine oil for motors like this. In fact, uh, the user, typically, you don't really have maintenance to do on your motor. So the best thing you can do is just leave your motor alone. Now, I have other motor uh, videos where I show motors that were developed later, those that use belts. They sometimes will use a drop of sewing machine oil on their bushing or bearing, depending on which they have. But that's not the case with this motor. This motor uses grease. And I showed in the prior videos how if you don't want to disassemble the entire motor you can rejuvenate re rejuvenate rejuvenate the original grease in your motor and i showed how to do that in the last installment what did i use i did not use sewing machine oil sewing machine oil is too thin and when the motor gets warm that thin oil can go places you don't want it to go so don't do that this bottle that you see with the tape here is 30 weight SAE oil or a general purpose oil at 30 weight and notice it says non-detergent you don't want a multi viscosity you don't want anything that says 5W or 10W it shouldn't be any W's on there just look for something that's 30 weight this oil has only one purpose it is not for those of you who are sewing machine owners and users. This is a restorer's tool when you are going to rejuvenate the original bearing grease in the motor. And I showed in the last video how to do that. Only use one to two drops max, and that's all. And again, this is only for that procedure. That's a restorer's technique, uh, an overhauling technique. It is not to ever be used. You would never put this in your sewing machine. It's too thick. So just like everything else, uh, you know, oils and lubricants, there's a variety of them for a reason. And I wanted just to, to re-emphasize that because people find all kinds of things on the internet about what, what they should use to oil their machine. And it's very simple, sewing machine oil, and that's it. Okay, so you guys will remember I showed you, you, you put uh, one to two drops of that 30 weight oil here and uh, we let it trickle down. I also showed you when I had this end of the motor open, there's a spot, uh, one specific spot. Uh, you don't want to guess at that. You want to look at the video, and there's a place where you can put one drop of that 30 weight oil, and you'll let the motor, you'll, you know, you can hold the motor up vertically or stand it vertically. Do not let this motor drop. You will uh, stand a good chance of ruining it. Anyway, you'll, uh, the gravity will pull that oil. And again, that one drop is all you need because that will help as the motor warms. That 30 weight oil will help to liquefy old bearing grease and that will essentially rejuvenate. Uh, some of you may have motors that, that, that uh, make a little noise. Most of the time, I've only ever had one in, in all the years I've been doing this that had that bearing noise. But this is something you can extend the life of the original grease. Uh, in a future video, I will be doing a different procedure where we literally take the whole motor apart to then take a look at replacing that grease. But some people don't want to do that. They're like, well, how can I just, how can I get this motor uh, cared for without taking all of it apart? And that was why I showed you this. This is part, and of course, 
The great thing about these is you can really quickly check the, the length and, uh, of your motor brushes, how much life you have in them, and then we also talked about cleaning the commutator without sanding it because I no longer sand commutators. I don't like losing the motor life and shortening the life of these wonderful motors. I'd rather just clean them with uh, some rubbing alcohol, 91%. Uh, don't use the, the lower percentage. That has too much moisture in it. So let's turn the 301, which is a one of Singer's coveted machines, and you will see what you saw when we took this motor out. Now, the motor only goes in one direction. Let's tilt this. Actually, I'm going to lower this down just a bit, give you guys a little bit better view, a little angle here. Let's see if we can lower. Moving the tripod here, that should work. Okay, I'll give you guys a little bit of a zoom here. Okay, um, so remember that this portion, the, the worm gear, the top of the motor, because of course it's going to come up uh, into the top of the machine, it goes in this narrow, what it looks like a narrow, it's larger than the motor, uh, tube. And we cleaned off any of this oil that it got on here from who knows, who knows when and how. And you always want to have the motor with the terminals, the little brass terminal should be at 12 o'clock. It should be at the top. And we're just going to gently and carefully slide. And you'll, you'll, actually, you'll actually know because it actually kind of guides itself when you're pushing it in. And how do you know it's all the way in? It'll stop, right? Now, if, if you don't have it all the way in, you'll know because your bracket won't fit, right? So notice, I'll, I'll take it out and do that once more. Okay, so you want to watch as you're, as you're pushing this into that tube, notice that there is this housing here for the plug, and it wants to catch uh, this, this sort of section of your motor with the, with the terminals. So you may want to tilt it slightly to the left, just a little bit. Notice I just moved it barely, like almost like, uh, like 1157 if you're looking at a clock. So again, notice I'm... If you try to go straight in, it's going to be blocked by this plug. So tilt it just, I don't know, two degrees, and you'll see it slide in. And then once you clear this, uh, this is your, your um, <clears throat> foot pedal plug housing. Once you clear that, then your, your motor is ready to go back to 12 o'clock upright. Okay, so notice it's tilted. Now that it's past the plug, I can make it back to 12 o'clock. And if any of you remember, and of course I highly recommend that you, I always recommend you take photos when you're disassembling anything. Uh, and again, make sure, do not plug your machine in. It, it bears repeating. You never have anything plugged in when you're working on it. That's just silly. Uh, now, uh, I have done enough of these that I don't, I didn't need to, to take my own picture. But of course, the red uh, wire is going to, remember we have these little, these little uh, jackets, if you will, to kind of cover that connection. And I'm simply going to line this up with the, the connector and I'm going to push in. And as soon as I do, it, it attaches to that uh, connector on the motor. Push the, the other one in and they should be snug. They should stay. Uh, now, do not turn your machine upright yet because remember, this motor is just sitting there. That's where your bracket comes into play. And I, I just left my, uh, my the original bolt or screw with the bracket um, and the bracket looks fine there's not really a lot of dust now do you guys remember how the bracket went in remember the bracket is like sort of like an L shape but one side is taller than the other and the tall side is the one you want okay now what we're gonna do and you'll see that those terminals there's a housing in that terminal that's gonna line up with the the, the inside of this, and that this bracket is what helps keep your motor from going anywhere. Um, so I'm going to take this, and again, always look for, this is going to be a recessed Y, okay? On the back side, it's, it's actually uh, protruding in, from the metal. So this is recessed into the metal, the letter Y, and you want the Y on the right side. And again, that's the tall end of the bracket. And I'm simply going to put my bracket where you can see that it's going to line up with these. These are um, parts of the frame of the motor, and you should see the hole for the bolt lining up with the hole of the bracket. 
Now, you guys may remember, I'll show you again, to future-proof this, uh, screws can get tight because they don't get open very often. So I'm just going to take, and I do this whenever I restore a machine. I don't have to, but uh, that's just me. I like to do it. You never know when someone else, or maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be me if I uh, end up having to uh, work on uh, the machine again. I take one drop, that's all I need, of sewing machine oil. I put it on the very uh, end of the threads of the bolt, just like that. <clears throat> Don't put a bunch. You, you're not, you're not uh, bathing the screw in oil. You just need one drop on the end, and as you screw the, 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 this bolt in, it will, it will send that oil to the rest of the threads, and that's all you need. And it goes in a lot easier than it came out. Um, and then, of course, I want to take my, oh, I need a different screwdriver bit. Take my screwdriver bit, and I think I want the, the wider one, the one that is best suited to that size screw. And I'm just going to turn this. And again, like I often say with anything else, turn it until it begins to snug, and you'll feel it. And as soon as it snugs, stop. Again, it's, it's not that heavy. You're not going to lose the motor, just make sure it's secure, but don't overly tighten it. It will not appreciate it. So, uh, that is essentially how you put back a Slantomatic direct drive Singer motor. Uh, these are one of the finest motors ever built. This one is 70 years old and it's not worn out. It does not need uh, brushes. It got a little commutator cleaning. And again, if you ever overhaul a direct drive potted motor, which was the earlier direct drive beltless design Singer had, you will know because you will spend a lot more time. They're great motors, and I've overhauled many of them because a lot of the U.S. spec Singer 201s have those, uh, as well as some of the Singer 15s, and they're worth it. But I have to charge extra because it's, like I say, it's almost always about the labor. So... Uh, while we're under here, you guys can see if you've never seen the, the underside of a 301, you will see that it has these wonderful, beautiful steel, high quality steel gears. And you see, just like the differential on a car, you can see when I'm turning, this is all steel. Again, uh, later designs would use belts to connect these two, which is not as strong, not as exact. Uh, I'm sure it worked fine for, you know, a lot of general sewing. But again, back in the day, 70 years ago, they were still doing this, uh, using the, the steel gear sets and the drivetrain. And this is why they lasted. This is what you're looking at the guts of what essentially makes an heirloom quality machine, whether it's this model or brand or any other. Okay, so this machine is going to be now ready for other um, restoration uh procedures. I can already see this is pretty normal. You see, you know, lint. Uh, lint dust bunnies are, are just a fact of life for any sewing machine, new, old, vintage. Um, but I'll be going in here. Again, uh, it's, it's actually a good space to kind of mention to you all. When you're going to be doing any kind of cleaning or lubrication, highly recommend get your dust out first, okay? You can use canned air. I don't really see, it's kind of wasteful here. I don't have that much dust, a little cobweb there. So I'll be uh, taking my, um, I will be taking my lint brush and going around and getting all this dust out. And then I will start coming in to see if I need to clean any old grease. Uh, and then of course the next step is to put in new lubrication. I will put one drop of sewing oil with uh, each of my moving metal parts only the gears are going to get a little dollop of grease. And when you do the grease, guys, you don't need to smother them. I have had machines that look like they were drowned in grease. Um, you just need to coat all of the, the teeth of the gears with the grease, and you're good. It doesn't need to be, uh, you know, a half inch thick because it can only hold, the gears can only hold so much grease. So anyway, that is the Singer 301 uh, reinstallation of the motor. Uh, if you guys have questions or comments, please share them there. And I'm going to leave the lid of my 301 off. Uh, I'm not putting it on right now. Uh, you see me holding it here because I have work to do. I need to go and, <clears throat> go and inspect any cleaning. And then I'm going to start lubricating. 
Uh, and then I'll be doing this. I do this in sections. I'll be looking at the top, then I'll move over to the side compartment here where the needle presser bar are. I will be taking off the hand wheel and again, uh, and then of course I'll go into the shuttle area and remove the bobbing case and get all that cleaned out. Because again, a lot of this, uh, this machine was working, the seller demonstrated it for me, but uh, I know that it, it needs uh, to be brought back to its original specs before uh, it has a new owner. When someone really wants to just sit down and sew. Most of my clients, they're not restorers, <laughs> or they would be doing this themselves. They are sewers, and, or maybe they're new and they want to be a sewer. And they just want a machine that they can count on, that's strong, reliable, that they don't have to pay a fortune for, and have it be made of plastic. So, there you go, guys. A uh, little rambling video there for me, but I, uh, this is one of the great iconic machines of uh, the Singer, once great Singer company, and just wanted to share with you, people have been asking about that motor. Uh, you will use somewhat similar techniques when you, uh, if you remove and maintenance the slanted direct drive motor for the Singer 400 series, 500 and 600, just know that the specs on those motors were altered slightly over the years, so never assume that they are all interchangeable. You want to go back and uh, make sure you get the right motor for the right model, but the procedures are somewhat similar. Thanks for watching everybody. I uh, hope this was helpful and stay tuned for uh, another series of videos that will be coming uh, very soon.